Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our next episode of Coffee and Coaching with Keith. So I'm excited for you to be here. Uh, we have a lot of action-packed content to cover today, which I guarantee will blow your mind. So just to set parameters, we're going to spend the first 20 or 30 minutes giving you a solid foundation of what it means to truly communicate like a world-class leader and coach. And then the last 15 minutes or so, we're going to open it up to your Q&As. So feel free to start writing those questions out right now so that I can start responding to them as soon as we hit that uh, 40, 45 minute mark. Uh, again, I admire your commitment to coming here so you can take the time to reflect on you and what you can do to be the best leader you can. And to, to kick this off, I want to just share with you a few questions just to self-reflect on. You know, think about it as a leader. Think about it as a salesperson. It, again, it doesn't matter if you're a sales leader, operations, uh, finance, engineering. If you're a people leader, and you're responsible for the developing of the future leaders of the organization, ask yourself, where do you find 100% alignment among your team? What conversations do you struggle with? What conversations, or should I say, what difficult conversations do you shy away from and hope that the issue just uh, takes care of itself? And finally, most important, how do you create buy-in with your team? Whether it's around a new initiative, uh, a change in comp structure, change in territory management, um, uh, what else? Uh, CRM adoption, uh, uh, making them accountable. Uh, how do you create that buy-in with your team so that you have them focus on one unified objective? So now imagine this, and this is really the ultimate essence of what enrollment is and what you'll be able to do at the end of this 45 minute call. Imagine right here, I'm holding your business objectives, okay? Your goals, your KPIs, your scorecard, all right? Now in this hand, I'm holding all of your people's and your customers' personal goals, values, priorities. Imagine if you, are able to align each person's personal goals and priorities with your business objectives. Now imagine the exponential output you would get because now they see what's in it for them. And that's the only way you can create alignment, engage and re-engage with your team and ignite their motivation through enrollment. So let's dive into this. Now, I know, uh, as you know, I'm not a big data guy, but I just wanted to share this with you because uh, for some of you, this may come pretty shocking. Uh, and this was a study done by the Carnegie Institute of Technology. Now check this out. 85% of your financial success is due to your personality and ability to communicate, negotiate, and lead. Shockingly, only 15% is due to technical knowledge. Ask yourself where you invest your time when it comes to your own personal and professional development. Ask your company where they invest their time when they're training new recruits or rolling out a new product or service. Are they spending more time on the actual features and benefits uh, and st stats and, and what you need to know about your products and service? Or are they spending more time helping you communicate that? Because you could have the best product or service in the world, but if you can't communicate it, it's the, it's, the, it's the exact reason why there's a difference between an A player and a C player. A players communicate more effectively than C players. So ask yourself, where do you invest your time? We need to balance this out to focus more on our communication, but that's just not enough to say, okay, everyone, we need to be a better communicator. I am now going to give you not only the skill, the framework, I'm going to give you the model of the art of enrollment, and I'm going to be sharing with you the most common, uh, difficult conversations that managers are having today 
with their teams, especially when the conversations have changed now that our hybrid world is not going anywhere. So let's just kick it off with a question, which I think is pretty rhetorical. Who determines whether people open up or shut down in every conversation? You do, okay? Now, here's the thing. People ask me, wait a second, Keith, isn't there a balance of responsibility here? I mean, you know, if I'm delivering a message, fine. You know, I'm responsible for my message, but isn't there a responsibility on the other person's side on understanding my message? Well, you could play the 70, 30 and 60, 40% game all day long. But what if you as a leader take 100% accountability for not only the message sent, but the message received? Now, some of you might be pushing back a little bit, but think about it. Here's a massive benefit. If you take 100% responsibility for the, for the message delivered and received, you have full control of the conversation and you can change it in a way where you can drive better results. So I remember years back before uh, sales leadership being my last book and coaching salespeople into sales champions, my first coaching book, which many of you have read. Uh, one of the most difficult chapters that I was writing about is, is this art of enrollment. And when I talk about enrollment, I don't talk about enrolling in a class or enrolling in an insurance policy. I'm talking about how do you create buy-in? How do you create alignment? How do you get everyone focused towards a shared goal and vision because they can also see not only the impact they're going to make on others, but the impact that they can make on themselves and the people around them. So I want you to think about the world's greatest leaders. And just, just, of course, there are so many more I can fit on the slide. I just happened to grab a few. Uh, look at what these leaders stood for, okay? Motivation, okay? Uh, equality, diversity, spirituality, world peace, innovation, uh, eradicating hunger, Okay, these are the things that these these incredible leaders all over the world stood for. But here's the thing. When I was studying them, I couldn't figure out what made them so great. Not great in the impact that they had in the world, but great in the way they communicate to have that impact in the world. And the more that I studied them, uh, I quickly realized they didn't have a model of what made them so great. They spoke from their heart. And that's where the greatest messages come from, not from your head. However, what I want to give you is a framework so you can start coaching from your heart and becoming an exemplary communicator. So if you think about all these leaders, think about the one thing they all have in common. They're taking a stand for something bigger than themselves. They're taking a stand for, as I said before, equality, diversity, um, innovation, uh, eradicating hunger, world peace, uh, spirituality. These people took, took a stand and shared what hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people wanted to be a part of. They enrolled them in something bigger. Now, what we're going to work out to bring it more to a practical level is how do you enroll people in your organization? How do you as a manager enroll your team? How do you as salespeople enroll your customers and prospects? And how do you as people in different departments actually break down departmental silos and barriers? Okay, if that's one reason to stay on the call, I'm gonna share with you not only how but the actual coaching talk track as well as how you can enroll each person in coaching and make sure each of them are fully bought into coaching and want to be coached. So let's keep going. When you initiate a conversation, why is it so essential to enroll people around your intentions and agenda? Now keep this in mind, okay? There's two types of generally speaking, two types of conversations that managers engage in. There's the conversation where people are coming to them, and then there's the conversation that they're initiating themselves. Now, if we're talking about the relationship between a manager and their coachee, okay, when it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching 
session or a situational coaching moment where the coachee is coming to you looking for assistance or guidance or help, hear my words, it is always the coachee's agenda. But Keith, what about my agenda? What about if I see something that needs to change? What if I observe toxic behavior? What if I'm dealing with an underperformer? What if I notice that someone's attitude is bringing down the rest of the team? Am I not supposed to say anything and wait for them to come to me? Well, you'll be waiting their whole career for them to come to you. So when you initiate a conversation, it is essential to enroll your people around your agenda, okay? And the reason why it is so critical is very simple. And this is the ultimate mantra of what we're discussing here today. When intentions aren't clear, people default to fear. It's that simple, okay? So in any conversation, it, it doesn't matter who you're having it with, whether it's inside or outside of work, when, you're, when you are initiating a conversation and you are approaching someone, which may even be perceived as a difficult conversation, and you dive right into it, when intentions aren't clear, the human condition defaults to fear. Because in every conversation, people are always tuned into WIIFM. What's in it for me? So sure, when they're approaching you, they have their agenda. They're looking for help. But when you're approaching them, you have your agenda. But here's the thing. Everyone has an agenda. So how do we honor everyone's agenda while making sure we're taking our agenda and achieving the results we want where everyone benefits? Well, Here's why enrollment is so critical. I'm going to share with you two examples. Uh, one is a story and one is something that I'm going to make an assumption. Many of you have been in this situation before. So there you are. You're sitting at your desk. You're typing away, answering your emails, answering your texts. Okay. And all of a sudden, an email pops up from manager and it says, please call me ASAP. What's your first reaction? Don't, don't type it in the chat, no profanities. Oh no, what did I do wrong? Am I getting fired? Am I being put on a, a, per, a performance improvement plan? Did I just lose a big account? Did someone just quit? Oh my God, we, we don't know the intention. All we see is please call me ASAP. And the first thing we do is default to what went wrong. As human beings, we never default to what's right. Because when we get an email like that, we never say to ourselves, oh, my boss is going to tell me how wonderful I am. We don't react that way, do we? We always go to fear. So finally, you muster up the courage to call your manager. Because right now, your intentions are assumed fear and distrust. So finally, you give them a call. And your manager says to you, hey, listen, I just want to give you some acknowledgement and let you know I've noticed that this was a really tough quarter for you and you started out slow, but I saw how hard you worked and you really picked up, filled your pipeline and brought in some really great business. And I just want to acknowledge you for your hard work. What? You're not going to tell me you saw that coming, did you? Okay. When intentions aren't clear, people default to fear. Let me give you another example that my management friends probably have ran into many times. Now, as you have known, if you're familiar with my, my book, I discuss how most managers, until I start working with them, are essentially chief problem solvers and subject matter experts. Now, of course, being a subject matter expert is important, but it's only a part of your value. Because as a reminder, chief problem solvers, uh, typical MO is when one of their direct reports or one of their customers comes to them, their visceral response is, oh, I've dealt with it before. Um, I've even walked in their shoes before. And they say, here's what you need to do because this worked for me and you should do it. And that, my friends, is creating the very things we want to avoid because we are robbing people of the very accountability we want to instill by giving them the answer. And we're creating the very dependency we want to avoid because we're sending a message that, hey, every time you come to me, 
I'm going to solve the problems for you. Now, check this out. Then you, as a leader, you go to my management coach training transformation program, all right? And over the two days or sessions we work on remotely or in, in person, you truly have transformed in your mind, in your thinking, in your attitude, as well as in how you engage, communicate, and coach your people. But now keep in mind, your people are still at the office or at home. They're working. They don't know where you are. They just know you're at some conference or some training. And then you come back. Now, clearly, you are going to be changing the way you engage with your people. You're no longer going to be leading with answers and being the chief problem solver because that doesn't build people's value. It actually destroys their confidence. And you're going to shift to an, a world-class coach and leader. Okay, and you study the framework like my leads framework, L-E-A-D-S, and you're ready to go out there and start using it. And you're thinking, OK, you know, uh, Keith told me I have to start leading with questions to instead of making assumptions, I need to assess and gather the facts. I also need to make it a safe place for people to want to be part of having this conversation of exploration. So here you are. Right. You didn't tell anyone that you went through this course. You didn't tell anyone that you're changing the way you lead, engage, and communicate. So keep in mind, now here I am, I'm one of your directs, and I come to you and I say, hey boss, I have this challenge and problem. Here's a situation. Um, I have this one deal, it's, deal, it's stuck in procurement. I'm having a hard time pushing over to finish on. Uh, can you help? Now keep in mind that we've conditioned the people around us to respond to us that way. So me, as one of your employees, are thinking, great, I go to my manager, they're going to do what they always do. They're going to tell me what to do. But all of a sudden, you say, so, so Keith, um, what's your opinion on how to handle it? But it, it doesn't really matter my opinion, boss. I'm coming to you. Just tell me what to do. No, 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 no. I, I'm happy to share my opinion with you. However, you know, how have you handled this? How have you handled something like this the last time? What did the conversation sound like? When you spoke to the customer, how did you respond to their objection? When you say they're being difficult, how do you mean? It's only going to be a matter of time till you freak your people out and the same thing is going to happen because they don't know your intentions and when they don't know your intentions, people default to fear. They're going to think, why are you asking me these questions? Are you singling me out? Am I in trouble? Again, defaulting to fear because we never took the time to let them know change is coming. So let me be exceedingly clear. Anytime you as a leader are approaching anyone, your team, your customers with any change, as small or as big as you may think it is, you have to set positive intent so people understand your intentions and where you're coming from. So now I'm not just going to move away, uh, you know, talk about theory. I'm going to move now towards practicality. I'm going to give you my leads uh, eLads coaching framework, which is built off my leads coaching framework. And this is the five steps of enrollment. So listen, everyone. Don't worry about writing this down. Don't worry about taking copious notes. Not only is this going to be recorded, but um, as long as as long as you stay on the call, I'm going to be sending everyone my deck. So you're getting everything in this deck because to me, what's the point of sharing it if I can't give it to you so you can accelerate your, on your own success? So here are the five steps to enrollment. Now, let's position this. You're approaching someone. You have something that you've observed, something you've noticed, something that you need to discuss, whether it's with your team or an individual. Again, could be a performance issue, could be a toxic attitude, could be a change in compensation, uh, could be a, a job related change. Um, it could be anything, but you are initiating the conversation. Before you even dive into it, you need to create a safe place. Now, managers can play the power card and say, well, you want to know what? Hey, you have a minute? And what are your, what are your directs going to say? Oh, for you, boss, I got nothing but time. As a matter of fact, I was just sitting here waiting for you, just kicking my feet back, waiting for you to ask for me to do something. 
Okay. Well, you could play that power card or this, the person might react the other way and go to fear. Um, hey, you got a minute? Well, actually, um, let me check my schedule. I don't have a minute until 2024. Okay. In either situation, they don't know your intention. So now check this out. Assess the timing of the conversation. Respect their time just like you want them to respect yours. So start off with, hey, I wanted to talk to you about a few things I noticed that if we can work on together would make you even more successful and eliminate some of the challenges and additional work on your plate. Do you have a few minutes now or are you in the middle of something? Now, folks, let's break this down right now. I wanted to talk to you about a few things. Uh -uh. You stop right there, you're going to freak people out because they're going to start making assumptions around the few things that you want to talk about, which are probably going to be negative. I've noticed that if we can work on together, here it comes, everyone, what's in it for them, the enrollment part, would make you even more successful and eliminate some of the challenges and additional work on your plate. Oh, now I know why my manager wants to talk to me and I see the benefit in the conversation. Why wouldn't I want to have that conversation with my manager? But don't lose sight. Ask for permission. Do you have a few minutes now or are you in the middle of something? Again, don't just say you got a minute because often they'll say yes. But what happens if they're having a bad day? What happens if they just lost your salespeople lost a big deal? Um, what happens if you're in the middle, they're in the middle of getting something uh, finished and you're an interruption? Yeah, they'll speak to you and have that conversation, but how engaged do you really think they are? Catch them at the time that's best for them, where they're most open, present, and engaged to receive a conversation, even if you feel it might be a tough one to have. So first thing, assess timing of the conversation. Now, here we go, everyone. The five steps of the enrollment framework. Framework. We talked about assessing the conversation. Here we go. E-L. E-L. Enroll and learn. For those of you that are familiar with my leads coaching framework, you'll notice that this is very familiar uh, uh, next to it. But all I've done is, is change it from learn, enroll, assess, define support to enroll, learn, assess, define support. Why? Because either the coachee is coming to you and sharing the L, what they want to talk about, or you are going to them where you need to enroll them in what you want to talk about. So, and this is just an example. What I want for you, now, that is a pure coaching language at its finest. What I want for you, what I want for you is to get that promotion you said uh, was important to you. What I want for you is to take that family vacation you've been waiting on for two years. What I want for you is to be able to save uh, enough money to buy that house that you were looking at for the last couple of years. Um, what I want for you is to feel more connected, engaged, uh, and successful and less stressed in our new remote world. These are all positive things. You're taking a stand for people when you use the wanting for statement. Now, let me just throw out this for one minute, this one caveat, okay? For those of you that are sitting there, and I don't care if from the US or somewhere from Europe where English is not your dominant language, okay? The first thing I hear is, Keith, what I want for you, that sounds weird. Well, guess what? I've used it on you guys in the beginning of this program for a reason, because I want for you to see how it lands on you when it truly comes from your authenticity and from your heart. Okay. And, and it's, it's a truly a very powerful statement that I encourage you to try immediately. Now, again, if it's not sincere, people are going to know. One other thing, uh, don't assume what motivates them. Maybe in another session, we can talk about what we need to do to uncover and motivate people. But right now, unless they specifically told you they want that vacation, they want that house, they want that promotion, they want that peace of mind, you're making an assumption. So you can always start with a general enrollment statement, which sounds like what, excuse me, what I want for you is to achieve this, the goals and the success you want in your career. Well, that's pretty generic because now you're allowing them to define what that looks like. 
Now, here's the next step. Stay positive intent around your observations and requests. So here is my intention, or I've noticed a few things. So if you're coming there with a new initiative, it's probably going to sound like here's my intention or here's what we're going to be working on. If you're coming to them with an observation that you really need to address, then it's going to sound like the second part. And again, just an example. I've noticed a few things you're doing that could potentially hurt your personal brand and productivity. But wait a second. That sounds really strong, Keith. But what did I start with? What I want for you is to achieve the success you want in your career. You started on a positive. Now you can be very direct in a positive way. I've noticed a few things that you're doing that could potentially hurt your personal brand and productivity. You get to state exactly what you need to discuss with them. You don't need to flower it up or put sugar all over it. All right. And why can you be so direct? Because now you're going to drive home the personal benefit. So here's what's in it for you. That's why I'd like to discuss how I can best support you to achieve your goals without the overwhelm and stress. Okay. And finally, get permission. Are you open to discussing this? Okay. So now you have permission to actually have a conversation with someone. And the final step, everyone, guess what? You move right into coaching or in my world, assess, define, support, the last three steps in my coaching model. Now that you have alignment around your agenda and you've set your intentions, they're clear, they're positive. Now you've basically gotten permission to coach them. So before when they're coming to you, coaching's automatic. When you're going to them, you need to set proper intent. So there's your model. And yes, you will be getting this in uh, your inbox shortly. Now, being a practical person and also looking at the clock and making sure we have enough time to uh, handle some Q&As, which I see uh, some great ones coming in. I want to give just a couple of examples of how you enroll your team in coaching. And as I said, being a, an author, I guess, is an occupational hazard. Uh, I'm not just going to sit here and, hey, go enroll people. Great theory. How do you execute on that, Keith? Here are the talk tracks, okay? Now, I know this is long, but treat it like a buffet, okay? Take what you like, leave what you don't. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because you're going to have this template anyway. But again, wanting to illustrate what an enrollment statement needs to sound like when you're enrolling people in the most important thing that they need to have alignment with with you, which is coaching. So here it goes. What I want for you, there's the wanting for statement, is to experience the level of success you want in your career. After completing this leadership coaching program, I learned that just like technology evolves, so does the way managers work with their team to maximize each person's potential. Now, here comes the bulletproof analogy, everyone. Think about sports. The coach is there to make sure each player is always at the top of their game. I learn how I can be a better manager and coach so that I can support you in a way that you would find valuable and make you more successful. Now, keep in mind, this learning curve is something we're both going through together. So I may not get it perfect the first time, which is why I'll be looking for some feedback and coaching from you as well. What's most important is you understand my intentions. Now, why would I say that? Why would I say, hey, listen, I, I'm learning this too, so I'm not going to get this perfect the first time, and I'm going to look for some coaching from you just like I'm hoping you're going to be open to my coaching. It simulates one of the most powerful laws, <laughs> universal laws, which is the law of reciprocity. If you want your people to be open to coaching, uh, trustworthy, transparent, accountable, change starts with you, okay? And think about the sports analogy. The greatest athletes in the world have sports then why wouldn't the greatest sales athletes have them as well? So now here you are setting positive intent. I wanted to take some to talk about what your perception is of coaching uh, so we can come up with a mutually agreed upon understanding and definition of coaching, set some parameters around the coaching, and what I can do to make this the most valuable experience for you. How do you feel about discussing this? 
There's your E and your L. Okay. You've enrolled. You've shared your intention. You've stated what you want for them. You've shared what's in it for them. And you've gotten permission to have the conversation. Guess what? Here we go. Assess, define, support, part of my coaching framework. Here are the questions to ask. Yes, that's right. I am giving them to you to make your life easier. Um, and this is it. You now have permission to coach them. How would you define coaching? Have you ever been coached before? What was your experience like? You better find out, good or bad, that needs to be explored. If you need to redefine the parameters and definition of coaching so it's valuable, what would it be? What would your expectations be from me of our coaching? What would you like us to work on or ensure we cover during our coaching sessions that would be important to you? Remember, coaching is always about the coach's agenda when it comes to one-on-one -on -one sessions or situational coaching. What concerns, if any, do you have about our coaching and what we discuss? It's just like Sales 101. If you don't ask your clients, what concerns, if any, do you have about working with us? Uh, you need to smoke out those objections up front, not wait to the end. Uh, and finally, how are you feeling about our conversation? And let's go ahead and schedule our first coaching conversation. There it is, folks, giving you the keys to the castle. So now every manager can't come to me and say, Keith, I don't know why I have resistance from some people uh, who don't want to be coached. Some of you might even say, Keith, I tried to enroll them, but it didn't go very well. Well, that leads to our second enrollment conversation. You see, here's the thing. How do new managers immediately build trust with a new or existing team? You see, what happens if someone had a bad experience being coached, maybe with you or maybe with a prior manager. You see, here's the thing. When you hire someone, they are taking their prior manager's face and they are placing it on yours, good or bad. Unfortunately, most of the time, they're putting some negative attributes on your face. So often, unfortunately, having heard this thousands and thousands of times is, Keith, I don't trust my manager. And I'll, of course, ask why. And they'll say, well, the last manager I had violated trust, and I'll never trust another manager again. So how then do you build trust or rebuild trust with a new or existing team? How about this? How about yesterday? And I see this happening all day long. Yesterday, you were part of the team. You were their peer. Then you got promoted, and now you're the manager of the same team you used to be part of. Keith, what do I do? I got you back. Here we go. How to enroll your new team, or if you had been a peer, and now you're the manager. Again, I am going to be giving these to you because I want to hear the feedback and say, Keith, this worked so amazing. Thank you. Uh, so let's go ahead and review this real quick. What I want for you, there's the want me for statement again, is uh, to leverage me as a resource to help you achieve your goals. Uh, I, I know yesterday we were peers and today I'm your new ma manager or, hey, you know, this is uh, a new for me and this is a new team. So I wanted to uh, learn uh, more about what you're doing and what I can do to best support you to be the best manager I can. Quite frankly, I have no idea how you like to be managed, uh, your perception of me, or what a manager should do, or even how you want to be managed uh, and coached. That's why I wanted uh, to, to, I'm sorry, I don't know where my glasses, guys, uh, to uh, love to understand how I can be the most effective manager for you to support you so you can achieve your goals. Uh, if any, uh, uh, I want to ensure that we are aligned to achieve our goals together. Uh, it's important for me uh, to maintain and re the relationship we've had as well as maintain the relationship that I'm looking to build. And guys, as you know, I'm going like this, not because I'm winking at you, because uh, as many of you know, I lost my vision in this eye. Um, we, have, we have operated... Uh, uh, we have an opportunity to create a positive relationship and, and would be mutually supportive. Also, I'd love to learn how you do things as well so I can learn from you as much as you can learn from me. And there is that law of reciprocity again.
So regardless of your past experiences, are you open to having a conversation and designing our relationship in a way that would make each of us more successful? That's how you enroll people, set positive intent, and allows you to lead into the coaching conversation. Now, one thing I've noticed also is um, uh, building trust. How do you build and repair trust? Okay. One thing I see in practically every organization is uh, departmental silos. Uh, well, Keith, you know, sales has to get along with marketing, you know, and, and sales has to get along with sales engineering and, and sales has to get along with finance and operations. Well, unfortunately, what people don't realize is everyone has their own agenda. And when we're running around trying to get our work done and having to go to other people and rely on them to help us for us to do our job and achieve our goals, we are we're beelining right to them and we're focused on what we need. And unfortunately, we're not taking the time to be empathetic enough to focus on what they need. So I'm going to paraphrase what this says here, uh, but basically it provides you an opportunity to do a reset conversation. So not only is enrollment critical in setting positive intent, whether it's during a sales presentation, whether it's during a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's enrolling people in coaching or change, but setting positive intent about rebuilding relationships or repairing relationships. That's the great news about enrollment. You can always rebuild or repair relationship or trust. So let's just go through this pretty quickly so we can move right into our uh, Q&A. What I want for you, and this would be you saying this to someone else in another department, someone you may be working with, uh, is for you to feel that I'm a trusted resource who supports you to achieve your goals. And since we're in different departments and you're probably evaluated by different metrics and KPIs, we haven't always seen eye to eye when it comes to relying on each other to get our jobs done. We all have different priorities and points of view and I may not have always given you the attention and respect of your role that you deserve. I apologize if I said or did anything that may have hurt our relationship as that was never my intent. My friends, you use those last two lines, you will immediately open up conversations, okay? Going, saying I'm sorry, and asking people for their help are two of the most powerful words that appeal to the human condition, and it will open them up, okay? So that's why I can really use your help. Next time, I want you to go out and ask for someone for help. I guarantee you their visceral response will be yes. That's the human condition wherever you go in the world. So, uh, so now that's why we can really use your help. Let's reset our relationship and redesign our departments or how we work or interact with each other so we can both support each other around our goals. And I'd like to better understand your role and challenges and how you're evaluated and your business objectives. This way, this will allow me to support you uh, and your department while aligning our collective goals to achieve our mutual goals and put a strategy in place to do so. So to start, may I ask you some questions about your position? And of course, feel free to ask me some of those questions as well. Guys, this is, this is beyond gold. This is platinum stuff. You know, and at the end of the day, great companies recognize the need to train managers and leaders and salespeople on new critical conversations with their team and customers that connect people in a deeper, personal, and more meaningful way. And of course, if you looked at the final agenda, and I have only two slides left, and we'll dive into some questions. Uh, many people talk about, Keith, how do I coach up? Is that a thing? Can I actually coach up to my boss? Or can I coach up to my boss's boss? Absolutely. Here's the challenge. Most people have no idea how to do that. Why? because it's the language of enrollment. You have to learn the language. This is the language of coaching, the language of leadership, just like learning any foreign language or you know French, Italian, or Urdu, or Arabic, or Italian, or Spanish, or anything. We're learning enrollment. Now, keep this in mind. There you are, okay, and uh, you're thinking, you know, I really like my manager, but they're just not giving me the coaching and the attention that I really need. I wish they would. Now, you could be wishing your entire career because here's the problem. It may not be your manager's fault. 
and they're not clairvoyant. You know, sometimes you have to tell people what you need, even how you like to be acknowledged, coached, supported, and managed. Why? Because it's hard to recognize the needs of others if it's something that you don't get yourself. Okay, so if your managers aren't getting great coaching, it's very difficult for them to recognize what you need as well. That's why you have an opportunity to approach them and coach up. And guess what coaching up is? It's simply using the art of enrollment. And I'll just rift one off the top of my head right now. And of course, I'll share one with you when I send you out this day. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, manager, uh, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk to you about how I can really be the most valuable resource within the organization. And um, I've been you know, looking at my goals and looking at my, my key performance indicators for the year. And I really wanna make sure that not only do I, do I achieve them, but I wanna exceed them. And I wanna make our clients look good. I wanna make the company look good. I wanna make you look good. And in order to do so, I know there's a certain style of management that appeals to me, that works for me, that would best hold me accountable, uh, motivate me, um, uh, uh, and inspire me. And I don't expect you to, to know how to manage me. I mean, you're not clairvoyant, but I was hoping we can have a conversation around how I like to be managed and coach so that you know how you can get the best out of me and I can achieve the goals to get that we have together. Um, can I, can I, can I, can you help me on that? Guys, everything's an enrollment conversation. Coaching up does not have to be scary. And that's why in every conversation and interaction, you're either building trust and you're building people or you're eroding them. That's why every conversation is a coaching or an enrollment conversation. Because when you change the outcome, you change the conversation. And that is why there is no such thing as a difficult conversation. Why keep heck of you here? No such thing as a difficult conversation. Well, let's think about a difficult conversation and what we just discussed. I want you to think about a difficult conversation. Hygiene, ooh, performance, ooh, conflicts with, with employees, underperformance. Um, gee, what else? Uh, not using CRM. I'm sure none of you ever deal with that. Um, uh, toxic behavior, attitude, disconnected, disengaged. Uh, oh my gosh, these are really difficult conversations. No, they're not. I want you to think about a difficult conversation you have, and I want you to think about what makes it difficult. It's your approach, it's your current assumptions, and it's your experiences surrounding the situation. So um, if you had a conversation with me last week, and let's say it didn't go very well. Now, of course, it, that would never happen. Uh, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I had this conversation with Keith last week. It just did not go well, past experience projected anticipated future expectation called an assumption, I bet it's going to happen again. Your assumptions will now breed your behavior and your behavior will then lead to that self-fulfilling prophecy. So when you change the way you communicate and create buy-in and alignment through enrollment, you change the way people engage with you. They change how they feel. And that's the great news. Your company doesn't create the culture. You create the culture on your team. You're the one interacting with your team every day. You're slacking them. You're IMing them. You're, you're, you're having uh, video calls with them. You're on the phone with them. You're texting them. You're emailing them. Therefore, you are the culture. And that's the great news because change is in your power. So to wrap this up, uh, and I hope everyone can stay on for a few extra minutes here. I'd love to get your uh, read, get your questions answered. Uh, number one, I want you to think about what's possible for you right now. Okay. Uh, think about the conversations that you've struggled with for so long or the ones you've avoided. It's simply just using the model of enrollment to put the pieces of what your intentions are in there while aligning them with what's in it for the person you're talking to. That is the big miss. Now, secondly, I like to hear wins, even challenges. So let's connect. Shoot me a connection on Twitter, LinkedIn, okay? Uh, my mobile number uh, is plus one for my European friends, 516-231-2774. Uh, 
My email is kr at keithrosen.com. Uh, I truly believe what kind of coach would I be uh, coaching people to take an unconditional stand for their team if I didn't do it for you. Uh, on top of that, I have a few bonuses that I'm really excited to share with you. Number one, you're going to get this whole download. Number two, I'm going to send you my ebook, Coach Up, 18 pages of different coach tracks that you can use when coaching up to your manager. I also want to share with you something that I just started because companies today are still struggling out there. I am offering a free event for your company, for your salespeople or your sales managers, where I will come in and we will do an interactive live Q&A session to address the biggest challenges that your team is facing. So if you'd like me to deliver that for you, uh, and it's been widely successful to really get your people inspired and give them a point of view where they can be successful and have the tools to do so, just email me, krkeithrosen.com. We'll get on the phone and discuss. So finally, remember the ABCs of leadership. Always be coaching but also the ABEs, which is always be enrolling. So thanks everyone for a great session. I hope this certainly achieved your goals. Looks like we have a few minutes left. I'm gonna go ahead and check to see the chat and what other questions we have that we can go ahead and start answering. Again, I'm not winking at you here. I'm uh, just closing my blind eye here. So let's go ahead and start. Looks like, uh, here we go. Uh, accountability, trying to assist members of the team to focus on what they, ooh, what that's a good one right there, what they can control and not look at eternal forces as the reason for lack of results. Um, let me just step on this one right here because I know a lot of managers struggle with accountability. Here are, here are two questions I'm going to give you right now to hold anyone accountable. Number one, Mr. or Mrs. Kochi, how can I hold you accountable in a way that would sound supportive and that I'm not micromanaging you. Or Mr. or Mrs. Kochi, how can I be your accountability partner in a way that would sound supportive and not that I'm micromanaging you? Second, uh, how would you like me to follow up with you if you don't honor the commitments you made? What would be a good way uh, to bring this up? Guess what? Now you're not banging your head trying to figure out how to hold people accountable because you're asking the wrong person. Ask them. They'll happily tell you. And just building on this great comment, one of my other favorite coaching questions is managers, they kind of get, they take the bait, they get roped in into things and conversations they can't control. And there you are, you're sitting at your desk or you're having a, a, a remote meeting and one of your directs are saying, oh, but you know, you just changed my comp plan and my territory. How am I going to hit my goals? And of course, you're going to get on your soapbox and say, but wait a second, you know, this is coming from the top down. I get where you're coming from. I want it. I want you to hit your goals too. You know, you know, this is, this is just, you know, it's a change. They thought about it. They really think that we could, we could hit our goals and make more money. You know, just let's go with it. I'll, I'll, I'm here to support you. And for maybe a week, that person would be appeased until they come back with the same question. Instead of getting on your soapbox, smash that darn thing and lead with a question. Mr. or Mrs. Kochi, we can either focus on the things that we do have control over or we can focus on the things that we don't have control over. How about we focus on the things that we can control so that you can achieve the results you want? When you change the conversation, you change the outcome. Let's see, what, let's see what else we got. All right, a lot of great affirmations here. It looks like everyone's pretty pumped up to go ahead and get out there and start en enrollment. Oh, I love what this person said. Most people, most people don't know their intentions as in their why. Well, to me, that I look at this so important that I want to break it up. Most people will know their intentions if they're going to someone and asking for something, but most people don't know their why. Now, um, to me, if we go a little deeper as to the why is before you can uncover your why, you really need to uncover your who. Who are you? What are the core values that you want to emulate? What are the core characteristics that you want to show up with um, so you can build the legacy and brand that that you're proud of that's your who then your why then your intentions 
Great stuff. Yes, greetings from India. Shukriya. Namaste. Uh, let's see. I miss India. I can't wait to go back. Uh, that's good. Okay, looking here. Uh, oh, beautiful. Uh, great comment. Um, uh, it all depends on, on what or who is receiving the end. See, here's the great thing about enrollment, everyone, is that the model of enrollment will stay the same. The people and the conversations or topics will change. And that's what makes your life a lot easier. You know, you can rely on one model for every conversation with anyone you're having. Thanks for sharing that one. Uh, let's see. Guys, it looks like we created, looks like we, a lot of, a lot of thank yous, which is wonderful. Uh, I'm being mindful of time. It's 1250. Uh, oh, Keith, the last question here. I'm going to respond. Thanks, Keith. What's your recipe of handling large work volume? Well, you know what? That's twofold. Number one, a great coaching opportunity. And how about I put a little teaser out there now? Maybe on my next co coaching and coffee with Keith session, we cover time management and life mastery. Because if you're still trying to sell or manage or even motivate your life uh, and motivate people and run your life the way you did prior to this pandemic, you're already set up for failure. So what a great lead into our next session. I guess we know what we're talking about next. But for now, I want to honor your time. Again, you'll be getting this deck. Uh, you have all my personal information. Please don't be a stranger. Uh, also, don't forget, I have my new LinkedIn Live uh, coaching course that I would implore every sales leader to take because I go do a deeper dive on enrollment as well as more templates that you can use. So I would encourage you to check that out as well. Until our next session, I wish you all extreme success. Keep on enrolling, and I look forward to hearing about your successes. Until our next time, make it a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.